I haven't made any videos for a while, as the length of my hair will demonstrate compared to what it was in my previous video. Um, the reason for that is I'm pursuing things that are very difficult to discuss. Um, I've always had the opinion that you have to be careful with too much theory and not enough practice, and especially with the philosophy that it's sort of, or an outlook even, that's difficult to actually translate from an intellectual thing into a living thing. Um, I thought that, and I still think that, if you have the ideas all in a row, but you have no idea what to do with it all, acedia, which is sort of mental, spiritual, emotional, and physical torpor, or listlessness is what results. You've figured everything out, and then you go, now what? Um, I think that happens to a lot of younger people when they first start to think about the world. And, you know, I, I'd done years and years, and I have done years and years of discussions with people, and I've gotten kind of to the point where I, you know, it's time to start doing my philosophy instead of discussing it. So I've, you know, reached around for the best tools that are available to me in my position in life and my circumstances, and I've hit upon uh, a yoga slash meditation regime that I follow more or less, dare I say it, religiously every day. I've never been an early riser, but now I start to get up at, you know, as early as 4 a.m. on a lot of days to make sure that I can go to my, it's not really a class, uh, I call it, I guess it's a practice, um, where I go and I do a, a rather strict and demanding yoga regime, coupled with um, just some basic instructions on meditation techniques as opposed to meditation theory. I've read about meditation for 30 years, and I've practiced it, practiced it off and on, but never under the guidance of somebody who seems to know what they're doing and seems to sort of have the same ideas as I do. Or not, I shouldn't say the same ideas, but the same outlook. More or less atheistic, but not strictly speaking atheist. Don't give me any woo. I'm not interested, and in fact, it repels me. Give me some techniques that are going to enable me to sort of do my philosophy. And I seem to have stumbled on to something like this, or at least the best that I'm likely to come up with, you know, in my circumstances. And it's kind of taking up a lot of my mental and physical and whatever psychological energy, uh, as is. You know, the normal rigors of being a family. Um, it's a demanding lifestyle that I've embraced, and I don't seem to mind, <clears throat> but it's left me with little leisure to ruminate and think other than in my private moments, i.e. when I'm doing my yoga practice or when I'm in my car or on my bike driving to and from work. These seem to be the only times that I get to do that, apart from the occasional Saturday night bit of fun with my friend, or friends, um, where we just go out and discuss things. Um, the friends that I know in person kind of aren't as quite so, I don't know, deep into philosophy, at least the way I see it, as my YouTube friends, and make no mistake, I have made lots of people that I consider friends in YouTube. Um, like, people I mean are actual friends, people that I feel a sense of loyalty to. Um, people like uh, Mystic of the Sands and Matthew Shute and um, people like that, Libra Module. I, I, I hesitate to say any particular name, but um, Phoenix Shastain and, and all these people, there, Kentucky, uh, I, Kentucky? <laughs> um, who've, you know, sort of engaged me in the discussions and more or less kept to the subject matter in spite of all the drama that's flying around YouTube. Um, conference report, um, the various permutations of, um, of uh, logic rolls, the dice, the uh, fascinating young fellow in Scotland. Um, you know, all these people I, I, you know, e even the people that I figure don't even like me. In fact, they rather dislike me. 
um, like in Mendham even I've benefited enormously from dealing with him um, I don't wish him ill or anything like that and I kind of felt that we were sort of on some bizarre level engaging each other productively even though it was overtly scatological and insane um, I think we, we were good foils for each other in some ways um, and uh, you know of course um, Pyro and, you know, all these people that I sort of had grown attached to and you know you sort of think at least in terms of, in ter in terms of YouTube I feel that sense of I don't know, connection with these people. Um, in as much as one can have a connection on YouTube in this format, you, you know, I've, I believe that I've made that connection with these people. Uh, and I don't connect with people easily at all. I'm not like that. It must, I think everybody knows that. I'm more or less a standoffish person, and I, you know, I, and I often apologize for that. It's, it's not my, you know, I, I shouldn't say it's not my fault, but I don't really want to be this way. It just seems to happen. Um, you know, the, some people are just, I guess, a little bit cold-hearted by nature, even though the, there's warmth in them. Um, so I guess this video was kind of as a means of addressing to the people, addressing the people that I've you know, befriended over the years, that I haven't forgotten about them. It's not, I don't feel guilty about the fact that I haven't engaged them recently. I just feel a sense of, I don't know, slight disloyalty or or um, I miss the whole thing, even though I don't have much time for it uh, these days. I'll do what I can. Um, but as I said, and, and people who have followed my videos know that I'm kind of reluctant to discuss my real sort of personal I don't know, philosophical regime with people. Um, not because I think that it's rubbish or anything like that, but I think that it's very difficult to talk about these things. Um, very difficult to talk about stuff that is so in here as opposed to out there. Words fail after a certain point and you get frustration. Um, and, uh, you know... It seems to cheapen it somehow if you don't actually do philosophy as opposed to just, you know, theorizing on it. How do you do philosophy? Well, if you engage in it, you'd better keep going until it becomes a doing, you know, like the stoic habit forming and all that stuff. Um, and uh, if you don't, if you have all the ideas and then you look around and go, now what? You it tends to be something of a body blow to the spirit because you sort of say, okay, I've got all these great highfalutin ideas and what can I do about it? I don't want to become some damned activist or uh, proselytizer or something like this. I simply want to do my own philosophy. And, I don't know, I seem to have been more in the doing than the ruminating lately. Um, but I cannot emphasize how much I owe to the people that I've interacted with over the years when it comes to my actual, I guess, intellectual or philosophical groundwork for then going on to do one's philosophy. Everybody that I engaged on YouTube over the years has taught me enormous, an, an enormous amount, even if it's not in the overt things that were discussed, but in, in ways of looking at things. Um, people that sort of doggedly um, maintain a sort of antagonistic position, even if it's a friendly antagonistic position in an argument, becomes almost a friend in my view because they're they're like a foil that I can test ideas off. And if I'm completely full of shit, then they can point this out to me. This is why I always sort of can't say I enjoyed, but I valued my engagements with with uh, in Mendham and people like him, they will find the flaw in your argument, which is great. This is what, you know, debate is, right? It's not so much nailing the other guy and proving that he's an idiot and wrong and everything, although I suppose that can be an end in itself, too. You can be kind of fun even to do that. <coughs> Excuse me. But, um, and I engage in that from time to time. I'm just as human as anybody else. Um, a good old you know, street brawl with another person that likes to argue endlessly is kind of fun. It's just human nature, I guess. Um, 
but by and large, it was more, you know, it, it did seem to go somewhere. Again, dealing with angry, misanthropic people for years who say that life is a horrible thing and is just best to be avoided can have the opposite effect if they're attempting to proselytize. If they're just trying to explain their own point of view, I get it. But if you're trying to proselytize, well, okay, then this is going to be a uh, competition as to who is position is going to prevail here. Um, if it's a competition or if there is proselytizing going on. I don't want to proselytize my own point of view, however much my videos may look like that or in the past or, you know, have always looked like that. Um, and I find it very difficult to sit down in front of a camera and start saying, well, when I was meditating, my mind went in this direction and it reminded me of this image and that's why I sort of, it became some sort of archetype for this thought and or this idea or whatever, which is what a meditation kind of com conversation sounds like or a yogic conversation sounds like. Um, it, it, it eventually sounds like a bunch of freaky hippies on acid sitting around cross-legged in a circle trying to discuss their experiences. Good good luck with that. Um, you know, it, it, I'm almost, I almost feel like I'm guaranteed and I almost want to get a, a negative reaction to sort of reinforce my idea that the whole thing is pointless trying to, to sort of discuss and win people over to your own point of view. And in a sense it kind of militates against one of the tenets of my core philosophy, which is perspectivism, the idea that everything depends upon a point of view. So I can be right from my own perspective, and somebody who utterly disagrees with me can be just as right from their perspective. Um, you know, how do you really engage people in that kind of dynamic, fundamentally, when you're, you're so used to the either-or non-contradiction of the Western mindset, the logical, rational... Um, scientific method type thing that I always sort of attacked, uh, at least in some contexts. So, yeah, I guess this kind of was started out as kind of a this is why I have kind of abandoned my friends uh, video. It's not that I actually did consciously abandon them, but it's just my circumstances have changed, and ha as has my focus. Now, that has actually, as I say, not so much guilt as disloyalty, um, because I just got done saying how much, just now, how useful my engagements with everybody have been over the years, and <laughs> said, well, thanks, you've been a lot of help, and now I'm moving beyond all of you people. I feel that way sometimes. Um, again, not guilt as much as disloyalty. Uh, I'm human, of course. Uh, from my own perspective, I would say, why should you be, or my own philosophy, why should I feel disloyal? You're simply living your life as you see fit, and you know this sort of thing. But you know, we're all humans, right? We we like people that we meet and we engage with, and that creates a sense of not so much obligation as it creates a, an understanding, I suppose, that this is a two-way street, right? It's kind of a negotiation. My, people that are interested in me want something out of me. They don't just, um, you know, and, and, and when I'm making videos, I want something out of the people that I am that I assume are going to watch my videos or that I hope that are going to watch my videos. This doesn't co so much create a sense of mutual obligation as it creates um, a mutual understanding, which I guess I've, you know, in some sense I feel like I've violated and, and I'm just trying to sort of say to all the people who have, you know, watch my videos over the years that I it's not as if I've forgotten you or anything um, quite the opposite actually but it's just that my circumstances have changed such that I'm currently in a place where it's difficult for me to maintain the YouTube thing the way I used to be able to do it I retire in a couple of years so then I'll have a lot more time on my hands and that will probably change I'll be able to um, engage every everybody, you know, new people as well. If you know, a lot of the people that I started to engage with years ago are now not on YouTube anymore, and others have arrived. Um, but um, I still value the people that I that I engaged with over the years, even the people that <laughs> I seem to clash with violently. 
Um, and I, you know, on a human level, I just wanted to make that clear. Um, uh, and I'll, you know, I've, I still sort of would like to make as many videos as I can and engage people on their videos and respond to them and that sort of thing. Uh, but um, I would feel a lot better if I thought that people didn't think that I was just, I'd lost interest in them as people or just said, thanks for the help now, I'm moving on to more important things and you peons can go back there to you know, working out your own philosophy, which you haven't done yet, obviously, and I have. Um, you know, I, I don't want that to be the impression. Um, and I guess that's what this video is about. Uh, just to sort of hello there to all the people that I have engaged over the years. I haven't forgotten about you, and I would like to think that I would, you know, circumstances could allow me to sort of pick up where we left off, or at least rejoin a conversation that may have evolved after I've kind of withdrawn from it slightly. Um, I'm going to, hopefully I'm going to India in January, and when I'm on vacation, I have a little bit more time on my hands, um, and you know, maybe I can start making videos then. Um, don't know, though. The circumstances are always so fluid in everyone's life that you can't really predict what's going to happen. But um, I'm still here, I'm still interested, and I'll, uh, uh, I just wanted everyone to know that I'm um, not gone for, the, for, for any particular reasons other than reasons of you know, personal ability to engage everybody the way I used to. That may change. And it may change sooner, it may change later. Um, hopefully it'll be sooner. <laughs> See everyone soon.